What the f is happening here? What is this place? This place is terrible. What the? God. Okay, so I've been to a lot of places and the stuff I just saw in East Cleveland is like nowhere I've ever seen. There's a vibe there that is, it just makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, the danger zone, the, the crime zone, the poverty area back there. I've never really seen anything like it. It looks very third world. It looks abandoned. It looks, it's actually really sad. Now I've been to a lot of messed up and run down places with terrible poverty and the worst crime in the country and I'm rarely intimidated. There was something about East Cleveland that didn't sit right. Maybe it was the reputation. I mean, it's widely known as a no-go zone for pretty much everyone in the area. And it was certainly the way it looked, but it was a feeling, an energy on some of the back roads of East Cleveland that made me feel unsafe, exposed, and at times doubting my decision to go back into there. So this is East Cleveland. I'm going to get to the terrible parts in a bit, but before we go there, we have to understand why we're here. This is St. Clair Avenue, one of the main drags through what's become one of this nation's worst hoods. But you know how the story begins, right? It wasn't always like this here. Going back to 1950, there were 40,000 people here and things were jamming. This was the most densely populated Cleveland suburb back then, up until the late 60s. East Cleveland was known as a stable and well-run city. Many people here made a fortune in iron ore, coal, steel, shipbuilding, and railroads. And this place was a mini boom town during the second industrial revolution. But then demand for American manufacturing declined. This place went to the shitter. In the late 60s, real estate prices crumbled and then the black population moved in. In 1960, East Cleveland was 2% black. But by 1980, it was 87% black, making it the second highest black population in the nation. Today, it's 93% black, and the city's population is less than half of what it was at its peak. There's 17,000 people living here now, living in conditions that on many blocks look third world. Look at this place. It's only seven miles from Cleveland. 40% of the homes in this city are vacant, and 40% of people here don't even have a car. Almost half the population here lives in poverty, and more and more people continue to trickle out of town for a better life. One recent report said this is the fourth poorest place in the country. It's only the fourth poorest? There's even worse places than this? Households here earn under 20k a year, that's the whole house, which is about 1600 bucks a month. That's one person on average working at McDonald's. And only about 1 in 10 people here went to college. East Cleveland schools performed terribly. This is home to just about the worst district in the state. Here's one of its recent report cards, all D's and F's. And they're laying teachers off every year because there's just less kids in town. They can't justify keeping staff on in schools that have classes shrinking in size. And dangerous isn't even the right word. One headline referred to crime in the area as like war numbers. 17 murders in a city of 17,000 people means well, one in 1,000 people here was murdered last year. One in 1,000. Here's the worst of it. This is Chapman Avenue, right off of the main road in town. Nobody officially lives here anymore, but there's a lot of foot traffic in this neighborhood, and you can bet these houses are used for squatting, where terrible and heartbreaking things happen. Tons of people who live here say it's disappointing to see East Cleveland the way it is today. <laughs> you think? Cuyahoga County, where East Cleveland is, they've set aside 50 million bucks to tear down large parts of town like this. I mean, this is only a small part of town in one little pocket of the city. There's tons of places in Ohio that look like this. They've only torn down about 150 homes in the area so far, but then the money ran out, so places like this are going to have to wait to be raised and forgotten about. 
Right now, there's so many homes in East Cleveland that need to be torn down that they're only getting the ones that are high priority, meaning the ones near schools or on streets where there's families. I mean, you can't knock them all down, right? The average home here is worth about $36,000. And you could buy a home here for like 10 k but you can bet there's a ton of tax liens on them and you'd be lucky if there was any plumbing and wiring left in the place. I mean, with the price of lumber, it would cost more to board up the buildings than the buildings are worth. Back in 1910 and in 1916, Cleveland tried to incorporate this place, but East Cleveland said, no way, we're gonna be an independent city. Well, 100 years later, they're wishing they had taken Cleveland up on that because in 2016, they tried to get annexed into Cleveland. But Cleveland said, no way, we don't wanna take this on. We're broke enough as it is. We can't afford to help you. So East Cleveland continues to trudge along as an independent city, just trying to keep its head above water. One time, not too long ago, East Cleveland's last working ambulance broke down and a nearby community had to donate one. And that is just so sad. Is this place even able to be saved? Like many of this country's terrible places, it was a large number of jobs lost that caused the big decline. But looking around, I don't know if these people even want to work or can work. I don't think they can even get a good job. Are they smart enough? Could they even pass a drug test? I went to East Cleveland. Um, How was your experience there? <laughs> I, I, I've, uh, I've been intimidated very few times while driving in bad areas in the country. Um, I think Camden was pretty in intimidating, parts of Gary. East Cleveland is on another level from most of the ghettos I've seen. And sometimes you just, you happen to go into the right neighborhood in a bad town. Sometimes you right. you may go to the, the right part of town, meaning like it's not the worst part of town, so you don't see the true hood. Um, but I was, I there were some parts of East Cleveland that I was like, I, I did not feel safe that were like isolated from the community where you know you turn a block and you don't know where the end of that goes and the streets are just so messed up that like you're driving over glass and rocks and debris and you can't see the, over the weeds and some of the right. yards and I, it's just like this just it felt like i was in not in america in some parts of east cleveland especially right. that the chapman road have you seen chapman road uh i kind of avoid the east side the whole east side of cleveland like the plague um you know like even the trendier areas you know like trendy <laughs> areas where like younger people like to hang out I, I went over there i've been over there before and i was like this this isn't even <laughs> I, I have no desire to be over here um you know Part of, part of my job when I was in public accounting was going to like clients. Um, I would go into like apartment buildings and kind of check them out and look for ways I could accelerate depreciation by like reclassifying assets and stuff like real <laughs> super exciting stuff. But I had a client over on the east side one time and I got off on the wrong exit and had to drive through some like pretty rough areas. and. Uh, which is say I had my I, the doors locked uh, and my hand was on the center console ready to draw my firearm if I needed to. It was pretty rough. I uh, did not feel safe one bit driving through over there. No, we did the same thing once. We pulled off to let the dogs get out to pee. We had left Cleveland on a previous trip and got off probably two exits outside of town yeah. and didn't know where we were going. And that was another time that I was like, oh, shit. Like, we looked around and she goes, what are you? Get in the car. And it was just like 50 eyeballs were on us. And we were just sitting there like, you know, with dog trying to pee. And she's like, let's freaking go. You can just sense like it's very, very infrequently do I go to a, a place where I can feel a vibe that just isn't inviting and feels you just can feel it. Right. Um, right. And I, I felt it both times I went to East Cleveland and I don't feel that vibe very often. So I was in the South side of Chicago two days before and I didn't feel that vibe at all. It was right. I mean, it was run down and I, I heard, I knew about how bad it was, but I would have just thought I was in like some normal bad part of town in any city. Really. I didn't get like the whole, like really sketchy vibe like I did in East Cleveland. Um, It's pretty bad. Um, I mean, it's kind of like what you'd see in any other city, but it's, very large and widespread and it's just 
it's just a lot of crime, a lot of rundown houses, um, just like typical stuff, just very like widespread. Is there any reason why I would ever go there? There's nothing really over there. Do you hear about a lot of crime over there? Yeah, um, I try not to pay like too much attention to it, but yeah, I mean, anytime there is like some sort of, like anytime you do look up like East Cleveland news, it's, there's a lot of crime there. Do you ever go to East Cleveland at all? Uh, there was a time when I used to live there and uh, just for a minute and I uh, worked there for a little bit at their high school sub teaching. What, what was your experience in East Cleveland? It was terrible. Just the classes were out of control. The place is out of control. Potholes that were horrible. Uh, just lawlessness. They had a traffic camera that would just get people, even if you weren't speeding. The courts don't function well. Just a horrible place. Why is it so bad in East Cleveland? Um, first of all, like the tax base is pretty well gone. And uh, just the crime is unbelievable. It just overwhelms the police. Yeah, I mean, I drove in, I've driven some really terrible places in this country. And there are parts of East Cleveland that looked like they were not in America with the, the condition of these neighborhoods. Um, it was it was intimidating and overwhelming. It was sad. It was like, but but like shockingly, like interesting, if in a certain sense, like I was just like, wow, like this is um, looks like a bomb went off. It literally does in some parts of East Cleveland. Yeah, believe it or not, you're seeing the improved version. They spent a fortune over the last maybe seven, eight years tearing down numerous apartment buildings and other. Yeah, I, I heard that. I, I mean, is that the solution is for East Cleveland is just to knock most of it down and then whatever's whoever's left and whatever's left is just can at least it won't be so dangerous and blighted and. Well, there's, there's been a lot of talk over the years. They want Cleveland to grab them up and annex them and bring their resources there. But Cleveland has struggles itself, and it's kind of – it's a blighted, expensive area and expensive process. So nobody's really wanted to do it. The only, the only thing that might happen with East Cleveland is it borders on University Circle in a certain part. And University Circle is actually very expensive because of the hospitals, University Hospital. And they built some really expensive apartments over there. And there was talk that they wanted to annex a little bit of Euclid Avenue by there and take yeah. it over the city. So I don't know if that would hurt them or if that if that keeps expanding with the hospitals, if that might encourage them to actually go through with annexing the place so danger wise what kind of stuff do you hear coming out of east cleveland what kind what kind of stuff goes on there on the news and oh where you're at shootings all kinds of gang violence drugs there's probably once a week you hear of a shooting at a gas station when robberies every day probably and there was the uh, serial killer that lived there, uh, Michael Madsen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you had known Anthony Soule, the other serial killer. He had lived there when he was younger. Okay. So there's there's sh gang shootings and serial murders and rundown buildings. That's not good. And, yeah, and recipe for disaster. Uh, low education system. And I don't know if you know, but... That was the home of uh, John D. Rockefeller lived there, and he had a summer estate there. No. Yes. I did not. Yeah, it was actually a wealthy community till White Flight took place in probably the 60s mm -hmm. to the 70s. It was still probably a reasonably safe, decent black community until, like, the early 80s when the crack so, epidemic happened 
Yeah. So in the 80s, that ruined a lot of, I mean, the 80s were terrible for a lot of our big cities. Um, I think that was like the worst time. Um, places were pretty run down. Um, like, how do you feel about, like, or how do the people in East Cleveland feel about who's in charge, the politicians, um, and what they're trying to do to make this place function? Well, they've had one mayor who was indicted in a corruption scandal that happened before uh, taking bribes, I think from contractors. And they've just had a recent politician, a former mayor, and it was in the paper, he was warned because uh, he interfered with a, another corruption investigation and they haven't given details about it. He had tipped the person off. So I don't know exactly what's going on with that. And the new mayor seems to be kind of weak. It it just seems to be a mess there. Yeah, can the police hand? I mean, they talk about defunding the police all over the place. How, can the police handle what's going no. on in East Cleveland? No, and uh, the police actually have a lot of judgments against them from police abuse and other stuff. But when you have a broke city, they uh, really can't do anything about that. They, they have judgments against them, but they're never going to be paid. Millions of dollars to a city with virtually no tax base and incomes. Just some paper. Do, does the government, the federal government, give East Cleveland money to... I mean, how do they, how do they operate if, if they don't have... Oh, I mean, I, I've yeah. seen the place. They clearly don't clean the streets, but like, how do you just oh, provide they don't clean the streets or fix them or traffic lights? But remember, they get money from the county. At one point, there was a uh, program which I think stopped, but it had improved. And the sheriff was sending the Cuyahoga County Sheriff was sending police there to help the East Cleveland police patrol the streets because the small police force was just so overwhelmed by the crime. Community leaders, blah, blah, blah. If this place hasn't changed by now, it won't. There aren't any leaders who can save this place. They need to save themselves. There's probably a handful of people here who could try to enact change, but it's gonna take a long time and some luck. As one resident put it, East Cleveland needs help in general, financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. But the smart ones, they'll just leave. Here's what one current resident said. I'm not going to become a product of my environment. I'm going to use my current circumstances as motivation to propel my life in the direction I choose, not the life that's been given to me. I want to prove to myself that I can ultimately achieve any aspirations greater than I ever imagined. Good for you, young lady. Get the hell out of East Cleveland. Be one of the few to get out of there and have success in life. This place needs a miracle. Hey guys, so if anything I just talked about upset you or made you sad or mad, well then do something about it. Call your local leaders and demand change. Chip in and help those in need. Make your community better. Because communities don't get better without hard work and determination. America's a great place. It just needs some more love and pride. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right, someone's a realtor now. Who wants to deal with a realtor they don't know when you can have me help you, right?